Almighty God, Heavenly Father, send down upon those who hold office in this city the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, and the steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well being of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, by whom the meek are guided in judgment, and light riseth up in darkness for the godly, grant us in all our doubts and uncertainties the grace to ask what thou wouldest have us to do, that the spirit of wisdom may serve us from all false choices, and that in thy light we may see light, and in thy straight path may not stumble, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, welcome, everybody, to our meeting tonight. <laughs> And uh, glad to have glad to have you all here. We had uh, our special uh, meeting of our Canvas uh, Committee on uh, Monday, and so we're in our newly elected commissioners and uh, followed by our reception earlier today, which many of you attended. And I'm glad you were able to attend. So, uh, item one uh, tonight's agenda is a special recognition award to an outstanding citizen. I'll ask uh, Gilbert Gonzalez, our assistant city manager, to help us with that. Mayor, members of the commission, uh, for over 10 plus years we've had murals in downtown area and none of them had ever, had ever been tagged. Uh, the early days mural was uh, finally tagged by uh, vandals and we had an outstanding citizen by the name of Angel Hernandez who volunteered his own time uh, to come in and repair uh, the damage that was done to the mural. And so for his good deeds, we've asked that he be here tonight to be recognized by the mayor and city commission. So if Angel, if you come forward, please. Angel. Once, once. He's <laughs> he was, he was, he said he'd be here tonight. Uh, we confirmed with uh, right, the DID. If he comes in, we'll, 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 re, we'll, re, we'll, uh, we'll revisit this item. We'll return this item. So the okay. second item on the agenda is presentation <coughs> proclamations. The first one is preparing. May 2018 is National Preservation Month and Preservation Certificate to the Downtown Improvement Board. So those of you at the Downtown Improvement Board or the microphone, anyone else would like to join you regarding this proclamation? Uh, Charlie Pettis, our chairman, and our vice chairman, Lars Kine. Let's see Frank Hale, but uh, we'll see you we'll see Brooke. <coughs> So thank you all for being here. Do you want to present this proclamation? He's recognizing our downtown, our historic downtown area. Historic preservation is an effective tool for managing growth and sustainable development revitalizing neighborhoods, fostering local pride, and maintaining community character while enhancing livability. And whereas historic preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for Americans of all ages, all walks of life and ethnic backgrounds, and whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the, contrib and the contributions made by <coughs> dedicated individuals in helping to preserve the tangible aspects of the heritage that has shaped us as a people. And whereas This Place Matters is the theme for <coughs> National Preservation Month 2018, co-sponsored by the Downtown Harlington and the National Trust for Historic Preservation. And whereas Downtown Harlington will be involved in the events to celebrate Preservation Month in May in collaboration with the <coughs> Main Street program, and whereas Imagine the possibility tours in Main Street cities will showcase available properties downtown as a way to engage potential investors, entrepreneurs, developers, residents, and anyone else who has imagined themselves running a business, owning a building, or living in downtown Harlingen on Friday, May 25th, and whereas 
Also, special exhibits of historic photographs of Arlington will be displayed at the Vermilion Restaurant and at the downtown office. Now, therefore, I, Chris Foswell, Mayor of the City of Arlington, hereby proclaim May 2018 as National Preservation Month. Call all people of Arlington and the Rio Grande Valley to join their fellow citizens across the United States in recognizing and participating in this special service, particularly in our downtown Arlington Preservation Month events. So I want to congratulate our downtown improvement board and everybody who's been working so hard to make the place. Angel just came in. Angel Hernandez. I can recap. Um, as I stated earlier, uh, we'd gone 10 plus years without any of our murals being tagged. Uh, finally, someone 
had nothing better to do, so they tagged the early days mural. Uh, Angel saw what happened, and he contacted the Ed, uh, the DID manager, uh, director rather, and said that he would volunteer his time to actually repair the damage. So thank you, Angel, for offering your services to help the city and the downtown uh, fix what someone destroyed. So thank you very much. And the mayor's about to give you a... a, a so we, we, want to, we want to express our appreciation to you for this volunteer work that you have done. It really is important to preserve the use of murals that we have in our downtown. It's a unique thing that puts our community apart. And so you're helping to do more things or just spend some guys to this effort. So we have this community service award that we're presenting to Angel Fernandez, artist and Arlington resident, in appreciation for your commitment to the city of Arlington, Texas, <coughs> for donating to our time to restore the mural titled The Early Days by Tremaine C. painted in 2001. Thank you very much. Agenda is item three and update report of the census to 2020 efforts. Uh, Mayor, members of the commission, uh, staff, uh, specifically myself and Rodrigo, have been attending several uh, 2020 census meetings. We started back in uh, 2017, and I'd like to report what's happened so far and just give you some general information on what, what to expect in the upcoming months. Uh, this year, uh, this census is going to be four ways to respond to the census. Uh, over the internet, which is new, uh, over the phone, and paper uh, mail ballots. Uh, one thing to note is that the Census Bureau will not deliver ballots to PO boxes. So that, that's going to be crucial. Uh, that's why the enumerators come in handy, because if someone does not have a, a, a mailing address, the enumerators will have to actually have to go out to their to their house and physically talk to somebody to make sure they get counted. That's why the work that planning is doing right now is so critical uh, to the census information. Important dates to remember: census date is April first, twenty twenty. However, um, citizens can respond as early as March twenty third over the phone or the internet. <coughs> Population counts. Back in April 1st, 2010, the census had the city of Arlington at 64,849 people. July 1st, 2016, they had 65,539. In six years, we grew by 680, according to the Census Bureau. Now think back to 2010 and think to 2016 and the traffic congestion that we faced. That was more than 680 people that grew in the city of Arlington. So. Uh, and these figures came directly from the, the Census Bureau. For every one person that is not counted, the city will lose $1,579 in federal aid. Uh, over a decade, that's $15,780. Just imagine if we're undercounted by 1,000 people. Over a decade, that's over $15 million that we would lose in federal assistance. That's why it's so important to make sure that we get as many people counted as possible. So what's happening now? Uh, the city is part of the, the LUCA process. It's a local update of census addresses. Uh, they send us digital maps and addresses that contain 30,568 addresses. In reviewing those addresses, the planning department has identified 1,440 that were not on that list. And we're going to send back to the census bureau to say, look, these people need to be counted. They're inside the city of Arlington. These, these uh, addresses have to be counted. And in some cases, there were entire subdivisions that were missed. This is Sunset Subdivision. All the yellow dots represent addresses that were not on the initial list that was provided by the Census Bureau. This is New Hampshire and John Rose Subdivision. And this is Vista Mary Subdivision. 
So what's happening now? Uh, we've secured the domain names of myharlingen2020census.us and myharlingen2020census.com. Now we're only going to have one email address, that's the .us uh, domain name, but we're going to redirect all the .com traffic that may be uh, typed in by accident to the, to the .us uh, domain name. Now, we don't have anything there yet, it's under construction, but we will start populating that with information later, later this, this year. Upcoming milestones. The next thing that has to happen is that we have to appoint a complete count committee. And that's going to involve people from the clergy, the media, uh, people from within communities that had low uh, response rates, uh, educators, uh, anybody that might be able to help contact some of these individuals to make sure that they get counted and they get notified of how to do it. Um, one of the things that we've done is we've asked the city manager to allocate $25,000 just for this process in the next year's budget. Um, depending on what we want to do, we may have to increase that number. Um, Cameron County is going to start their marketing blitz sometime in mid-2019. We would like to actually uh, coordinate our marketing efforts with there so that we get everybody at one time, not just in Hartson, but throughout Cameron County. And the other thing that we'd like to do is provide mobile computer labs where people can come in sign on to the, uh, to the internet and actually fill out their form through our, through our mobile computer labs. This is a copy of the .us domain name. It just says we're construction now, but we're going to populate that with uh, more information uh, as, uh, as months proceed. We have to answer any questions you may have about the census of what staff is not doing. Yes. So you were talking about the houses that were missing in subdivisions. How about subdivisions that are under construction or houses in subdivisions that are under construction? Are we picking those up as those building permits are being? Yes. Now, we have uh, about another 60 days to, to provide the addresses. Once we do that, if there are any new construction that, that uh, comes up between now and April, the Census Bureau will have a process so that we can actually give them those addresses as well. Any other questions? Does anybody have any other questions? This, this, is a, uh, I, this is really an enormously important issue for our community, and we really need to think of it as an, a, an important issue that we need to try to get right uh, this time, or at least do everything that we can to maximize our effort <coughs> to have people respond to, uh, to the census. And uh, I, I think uh, everybody in this region has, uh, has had historically had issues with accurate r reporting. This is not a very, uh, this is an actual count process. And so it really doesn't use scientific methods of establishing population. It, it is an old fashioned method of establishing population and it's not accurate. After the last census in 2010, I think uh, Tammy showed me how they had uh, looked at entire census tracts where they only counted one person per house uh, in, our, in some of our census tracts. Well, I think I know this city well enough to know that that's pretty unlikely that there would only be uh, one person living in a house in an entire census tract. So they didn't get it right. And if we don't try to help them get it right, then they're not going to get it right again. Uh, and to uh, clarify the record a little bit, um, the city of Harlem did not, did not claim in 2011 that we had 74,950 in population. That was a, a figure that the state demographer's office reported on their website mm -hmm. uh, in about 2008 or 9. Uh, during one of these mid-year uh, census, uh, and they do their, and the state demographer does their census <coughs> uh, or their population counts differently. Uh, they use uh, other uh, determining factors, other qualifiers uh, uh, to more scientifically come up with a count. And although it remains uh, lower, it's still higher than what the, uh, the, census, the U.S. census has our city at, and, but, it's, but it is, it became influenced by what the census was in 2010. So uh, th this is important, not just for monetary reasons that uh, that Dave gave you in terms of federal funding, it's also important as a, at, uh, for uh, people who look at our community to invest in our community and they see, uh, they want to see population, and a population, that, uh, they want to see a higher population. So we need to have, try to get this as accurate as we can. 
So we will need to engage the, the broader community in this uh, count committee. Uh, we'll have to uh, develop partnerships to try to get people to get out and make sure that everyone is counted. Um, and there are uh, ever-increasing obstacles to doing that, but I think it's going to be worth the effort for our community to try to do the best job that we can. So I want to thank the city staff for getting all this uh, early and uh, getting uh, organized so that we can try to do our best to get this job done in 2020. Absolutely. Thank all right. you. Thanks. All right. Item four is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of April 18, 2018. Is there anyone who has uh, any additions or corrections to the minutes? Okay. There being none, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mike Slide, motion carries. We're going to take item 5A off the consent agenda. So I'm going to read that one as a separate item. Consideration of possible action to approve the First mm -hmm. Amendment, the Economic Development, and Chapter 3A agreement with and exhibits between the City of Harlingen and the Development Corporation of Harlingen and El Clavo Sales Company. Mayor, for the record, I just want to point out that the uh, survey in your packet is not correct. Uh, that is an old survey that has a 15-foot license to encroach. Um, I do, for the record, want to introduce the corrected survey that shows the entire 60 foot, and I ask that you approve this item with this corrected survey. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Suppose like sign. Motion carries. Items 5B through E on the consent agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? So moved, Mayor. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Suppose like sign. Motion carries. Item 6 is consideration of possible action to approve the preliminary and final replat. Proposed skyline phase two RGDCU subdivision being 14.51 acres of land comprised of lots one and two in the resubdivision of Indian Creek subdivision, lots one and two of credit union, and an abandoned 30 foot railroad right of way along the east boundary of lot 70, block 76 out of lot Harlington Land and Water Cummings subdivision located on the south side of Grimes Road west of North. Loop 499, the applicant Dustin Moore of Moore Land Survey. Rodrigo. Thank you, Mayor, Commission. The uh, proposed subdivision consists of four commercial lots. Uh, they're being replatted into three larger lots. Uh, that's a combination of that Skyline Apartments and the RGV uh, Credit Union. Um, if you recall, in the, in the last meeting, we had a little bit of, you know, we were, we were releasing an old right of way easement that was in between. That has passed through this commission and this, uh, in your reading of the consent items, the second ones. So we're just bringing this one forward so that the subdivision can go through. The subdivision will have water and sewer um, services through the Harlingen Waterworks. And all the items on the preliminary and the final plat checklist have been addressed. The only thing that was pending was that uh, right away. So the PNC and staff is, uh, I'm sorry, staff is recommending approval. Are there any questions? Is there a motion to approve the preliminary and final replant? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign, the motion carries. Item seven, public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading to amend the existing specific use permit. Mm -hmm. Ordinance 0474 issued to Harlington CISD for a school and a residential multifamily M2 district to allow for expansion of the existing school located at 2525 Hain Drive, bearing a legal description of Lot 1, Block 1, Treasury Hill Subdivision, Africans, Harmonish, and CISD. Uh, again, thank you, Mayor. The, uh, as per the Code of Ordinance, a school, college, or university used in an M2 district requires the approval of an SUP by the City Commission. And so the applicant of Harmonish and ISD uh, wishes to amend a site plan approval, as you can see here, under the previous SUP to allow for an extent an expansion of the existing school located at 2525 Hain Drive. And so this is the existing school as it is now in this area right here is what they are proposing. Uh, they're going to um, addition of the school will be phased over two uh, over two years. The first phase will consist of demolishing a 1974 classroom this right here, this area right here, uh, and the building of a new two-story classroom. Uh, the second phase will consist of 
demolishing the office wing and the building of a new office and classroom wing. Uh, the parking will also be modified during phase two. The Lostrick parking regulations for an elementary school requires that one space for each classroom plus one space for each six seats in any auditorium or gymnasium. Uh, the applicant will be conducting the traffic study to determine the final parking regulations during phase two of the project. The first one is the demolition. Where do they stand right now? They have uh, currently 117 existing parking spaces throughout. So there's some here and here. And then this is, this is Hayne, I'm sorry, this is Hayne, and this would be Treasure Hills. Yeah, so Hayne's on the bottom of the uh, Correct. product. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Is that a new drop off area, Rodrigo? Can you go back? Yes, part of, part of this proposal is going to be a new drop off. Uh, we have so studied and received, yes. And again, we'll get a little more once they do the traffic study. But, but uh, this, this right here is what's existing, and you can't see it, but it's a little bit grayed out. This is what they're proposing new. So it's going to be a whole other area that's going to carry a lot more traffic on the property, not on the street. Well, yeah. Advance one, yes, this is in my neighborhood here. Yes, sir. Um, that's the existing structure. What do they plan on taking out? Right here. This is right here. Okay, those two yeah. buildings. Right. So this is this is the track that I can go back to real quick. So all this is going to be new. The track that's here is, is I think currently is this way, so they're going to modify that. Yes, sir. So on the area, you can see this better, but there's actually a large parking lot that lies between Treasure Hills Boulevard and the school <coughs> that you're pointing at. Here. Yes, sir. Okay. And so currently we have a lot of traffic congestion because they're using that side area. Right, right here, okay. It's no, they're the using the area to, 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 to this, what I would call the south of that building. You can came down to your pointer, keep coming all the way down until you get to Hain. Okay. Right now they're currently using that and then there's always a congestion there. Correct. Is that what you were referring to, Mike? Uh, among other things, yes. So those two buildings are going to come out, which you've already uh, yes. lasered there. Uh, and then one, they're going to build new buildings <coughs> to replace those two buildings. Yes. And then you said they're going to just knock something down, they're going to destroy something else and build right. something? So they're, they're, this building right here was built in 1974, and some of the trusses, because they were done by wood, are now that they've added some air-conditioned beds, they've added new tile, there's AC units. Uh, the, the load of them is causing some failure, so they're going to replace this one with a brand new building, but it's going to be two-story as a shoulder. And and then so up front, you said they were going to right. So this this is the existing drive space or something. Well, this is the existing drive. I see it right here. And then this area right here, all of this drive. It's going to be new. So this area right here is going to be their new drop-off. This is their current drop-off, and they're trying to redirect it in this area so that they can alleviate the volume. And are they going to plan on using that as parking afterwards? The, the, well, the, the existing parking is here, and they, they may be proposing other here. No, However, I'm saying the, the existing drop-off, yes. will that be converted to like a parking them? It, it's already parking. <laughs> it's, already parking. <laughs> it's already parking. And so again, they, they have 117 currently, so based on the traffic study, if, if they feel that they need to add more, they are going to add more. If we feel they need to add more, we're going to And you'll come back with it. Yes, sir. Right now, this is just the acceptance of it. We still have to go through the design phase. Yes, And when would they tear down and construct? This would have to be a summertime job, obviously. Yes. No, we're not talking four weeks from now. We're talking a year from now. Nope. I mean, 15 months. Yeah, they're, they're looking at finishing phase two in 2020. Okay. So, all right. Uh, I think they have a public hearing, so I'm going to go to item A and open the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak for or against the amendment of this uh, specific use permit? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and go to item B, which is the consideration of possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading to amend the existing specific use permit, ordinance 0474 issued to allow Arlington CISD for a school and a residential multifamily and two district to allow for expansion of existing school located at 25 feet on Hank Drive and a description of lot one, block one, uh, Fairfield subdivision, and ask the city attorney to read the caption. Yes, ma'am. 
an ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Harlingen <coughs> to amend the existing specific use permit ordinance 474 issued to Harlingen Consolidated Independent School District for a school in a residential multifamily N2 district to allow for an expansion of the existing school located at 2525 Hain Drive and bearing a legal description of Lot 1, Lot 1, Treasure Hills Elementary School Subdivision, subject to providing and maintaining the required off-street parking spaces in accordance with city regulations, providing and maintaining the required landscaping, and complying with the requirements administered by the Planning, Building Inspections, Engineering, Health, and Fire Prevention Departments prior to the issuance of the Certificate of Occupancy providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on first reading? May I ask some other questions? Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a few questions. So were the uh, the neighbors on Mariposa yes. notified? Yes. Okay. We on Ravenwood weren't. Uh, was was it both sides of the house of Mary Post of the houses or just the, the side of within, flooding to the school two, property? Within a 200 foot radius, <coughs> both sides were notified yesterday and they did come to the meeting. Uh, their, their concerns was not with the modification, was with the, uh, there is some uh, water, standing water that stays here when we have heavy rains and the school district is aware of it. Part of their redesign is to address that. Okay. And so their beliefs were, I mean their concerns were addressed, yes. The school has the same concerns that, that the <coughs> residents have, that water does stay there. I move to make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. <coughs> Item A is a public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading for a specific use permit to allow a storage container in a general retail <coughs> district located at 4705. South Expressway 83, bearing a legal description of Lot 1, Block A, Lowe's, Harlan's Commercial Subdivision, the applicant is Lowe's Home, Inc. The applicant is requesting a specific new permit to allow a storage container, um, eight, 8 foot by 24 foot, at the Lowe's located on 4705 South Expressway. Uh, they had previously placed the <coughs> container on site. Uh, our co compliance officer saw it, so we approached those and they came in. Um, and so they are willing to, to comply with our current ordinance that it states that they can only have it uh, for 90 days. They're willing to do that. They, mean they mostly store, um, uh, store merchandise. Uh, no chemicals are stored in the storage container, and it is already located in the southeast, which for them, it would actually be. Behind, behind Lowe's right here, there's a small uh, driveway. And so they are aware that our ordinance only allows them for 90 days. But uh, let me ask you a question. Is yes, sir. They're going to be coming every 90 days to try to renew it? No. Did they, they know the no, did they Did they have a, uh, the one currently expired? So this is like a different container? Or it's new? They, they didn't have one. They didn't have a, a, an SUP for one. They just went ahead and got it and placed it. When our code officer saw it, we approached them. They came in, and this is the process. So they weren't aware. They weren't aware. They were not aware. Okay. I guess right. And so after we met with them and we sat down, they actually want the 90 days so that they can think of a plan either by uh, right. So that was the one right? Yes. Give them an opportunity to fix it. To fix it, and that's that's, that's all they're asking. For. It sort of makes you wonder if you've got a 65 or 75 thousand square foot building. Why exactly do you need to add that extra 200 feet to store something in? I mean, you know, when I looked at it, I saw how clean it was in the back, and they do a great job of maintaining it, and now all of a sudden they've got to have a storage unit. Now, is With there a building that size? That seems a little odd. Is there not something we should do as far as, you know, through a mail on or, or some kind of notice to the businesses that we have a... New SUP or when, when the ordinance changed, it, everybody who had it, we were making them aware. Uh, and as, as they come in, I mean, we could put something out there if the commission issues to you. What have what they done at Walmart? Just they removed. Yeah. Huh? They removed. They removed. They're all gone. 
<clears throat> I mean, is that the same thing? That seems like the easy thing to do to me, but I mean, we'll go through the process. Well, this is, this just really gives them the transition period, right? Yes. 90, 90 days 90 to days. move to move it, and um, it, it, it could be less. They're they're asking if I get ninety, will they give me the ninety? Uh, their their plan. There's a, there's a fence right here, and their plan is to either build something in there or, or store it in there and camouflage it so that it's not. Seen. Well, it's good that the uh, code enforcement officer saw it, right? And, and, and follow through with it. Their <laughs> you said something, so I have a question. Yes. Sir. If they move that inside that fenced area, would that be acceptable? It's, it's, it's under cover. It's within their store property. Yes. If it's within their that, store, I mean that option was provided. Versus being out on the park floor, so they can. The, the nuisance part is when they can be seen from the street. In, in, in this particular case, they can be seen from the street. Yeah. It's basically yeah. having it inside their store. <clears throat> if they have it in the square front of the store, so their option is to look at that or just build something. I mean, they have all the material there. <laughs> okay. Uh, item A is a public hearing on this. Is there anyone like? To, I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone like to speak for or against this uh, ordinance regarding the <laughs> SUP? Okay. Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and go to item B, which is the consideration of possible action approval ordinance on the first. Reading for the specific use permit to allow a storage container in the general retail GR district at the above described location and ask the city attorney to read the caption, please. An ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Harlingen to issue a specific use permit to Lowe's Home Center Incorporated to allow a storage container in a general retail GR district located at 4705 South Expressway 83 bearing legal description of lot, lot 1, Block A, Lowe's Harlingen Commercial Subdivision. Subject to, a specific use permit will be limited to 90 days. <clears throat> Two, the storage container must be located in the rear of the property and screened with an eight foot solid fence. And three, comply with the requirements administered by the Planning and Zoning, Building Inspections, and Fire Prevention Departments, providing for publication <coughs> and ordaining other matters relating to the four block. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on first reading? So moved. Second. All, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Item 9, public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading to rezone from non designated end district to residential mobile home MH district for lots 41 through 100. Amended map of Sun Valley Retirement Village number 2, subdivision <coughs> lots 1 through 52. Palm Beach State Estate Subdivision Lots 53 through 81 and Lots 83 through 103. Palm Beach State Estate's Unit 2 Subdivision Lots 104 <coughs> through West Park of Lot 109 and Lots 110 through 138. Palm Beach State Estate's Unit 3 Subdivision Lots 139 through 159 and Lots 161 through 190. Palm Beach State Estate's Unit 4 Subdivision and Lots 191, 253, lots 255 and 256. Palm Valley Estates Unit 5 subdivision. All properties generally located south of Perkins Road and east of Alpha Palmas Road. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. This is a city initiated uh, rezoning to rezone the non designated district properties in the Harlingen uh, Emerging West District. These properties were annexed into the city limits in November of 2008. Uh, the city rezoning is consistent with one of the goals of the Harlingen Comprehensive Plan, One Vision, One Harlingen, which is to rezone all non-designated properties in the city. The subject properties proposed for residential mobile home district are mostly developed with <coughs> mobile home use. And these are some views <coughs> from the streets. They also have an airing view. Uh, some properties develop with residential single family. However, the residential single family use is permitted by <coughs> in the residential mobile home district. Uh, in essence, the proposed rezoning is consistent with how the properties are developed. Um, the future land use plan component of the comprehensive master plan uh, shows this area as high density residential. The request is consistent with the future land use plan and consistent with the existing and surrounding land use. The planning and zoning and staff recommend approval. Okay, well, I have a question on this. 
Uh, is this one of those dotted areas that you showed the Pleasant County before? Uh, I don't think it is. But we may, we may have some uh, addresses there as well. Those are two separate. So this would also make it easier for the census to to count these people? Well, the, the rezoning is for us so that we don't have any non-designated areas. We want all areas in the city to be, to be zoned. The, if there were any structures that were missing, we cut them in a different method, we're using, we're using aerial photography. Most of those addresses have been there a long time. Right. right. Okay. Just, <coughs> and this is just, because this is my district, this is just that ongoing, yes. right now, if somebody is in one of those properties, they wanted to put in a, a, a carport or make improvements to their location, then they would have to go through the whole process of getting it zoned and then come Correct. back and then getting a permit. This eliminates getting it zoned because now it's already zoned and it'd be consistent. Now they can just walk in, say they need a building permit, and they're done. That is correct. That, that's the purpose of, of uh, eliminating non-designated areas. Okay, this requires a public hearing, so I'm going to open the public hearing. Ask if there's anyone who would like to speak for or against this rezoning. So hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and go to item B, which is a consideration of possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading to rezone from not designated the end district to residential mobile home in the H district for the above described properties. And I'll ask the city attorney to read the caption, please. An ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Harlington, rezoning from not designated end district to residential mobile home in H district for lots 41 through 100 Amended map of Sun Valley Retirement Village number two subdivision, lots one through 52, Palm Vista Estate subdivision, lots 53 through 81, and lots 83 through 103, Palm Vista Estates unit two subdivision, lots 104, west part of lot 109, and lots 110 through 138, Palm Vista Estates unit three subdivision, lots 139 through 159, and lots 161 through 190, Palm Vista Estates, Unit 4 <coughs> Subdivision, and Lots 191 through 253, and Lots 255 and 258, Palm Vista Estates, Unit 5 Subdivision, generally located South Perkins Road and east of Altus Palmas, providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on first reading? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign, motion carries. Okay, thank you. Item 10, consideration and possible action to approve a resolution amending the Arlington Community Improvements Board mm -hmm. budget for fiscal year 2017-18. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the item before you is to amend the Arlington Community Improvement Board budget. Uh, essentially, we're rolling forward the unspent budget from prior years for our projects that have been approved by the board. Um, and I'm here to answer any questions. Staff recommend approval. Anybody have any questions about this one? Is there a motion to approve the resolution? No motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 11 consideration possible action to approve a resolution amending the Harlan Downtown Improvement Board Fund for fiscal year budget 2017 through 18. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this item also is a cleanup uh, item. We are uh, amending the uh, revenue budget for some assessments that we, we missed in the uh, original budget. Uh, we're also reporting some investment income as well. Uh, the department has reduced the expenses, so they have a balanced budget. And I will answer any questions and staff recommends approval. Any questions? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion to approve. Motion is uh, seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 12, consideration possible action to authorize the city manager to enter into a supplemental agreement with the Texas Dark Department of Transportation for the installation and reimbursement for the operation and maintenance of traffic signals within the municipality. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, back on January 1968, uh, the City Commission and TxDOT entered into an agreement for the installation and reimbursement for the operation and maintenance of traffic signals within the city limits of Harlingen. Every two, year, every two years, TxDOT sends a supplemental agreement for signature by the city manager. Uh, this agreement specifies the amount of compensation and locations of said traffic signals. The agreement will generate an annual revenue of $49,800. Um, staff recommends approval. 
Is that all? Did it start off at forty nine eight hundred? No, sir. No, sir. How does that go up? They they, they have uh, a calculation that they use. They have a dollar amount per intersection and per type of intersection, and those are listed in your packet. Right. The way it's figured, and they give us a number uh, when it's up for renewal. Yes. And we don't. There's no negotiating with them. It's it's whatever the number is for the intersection. Yes. Any idea when was the last time they adjusted that number? Um, about three years ago. About three years ago. Yeah. Because I remember every year this comes up, we always ask the same question. Yeah, I think I about just, three years I was trying ago. to remember, it was about three years ago they adjusted yeah. it. I think it was, it was at 47, right? Y yes. 47, yes. And, and the other thing that's really good is we have a good relationship with TxDOT, and anytime we need a cabinet or a uh, traffic signal light or pool, they'll, they'll give us that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good relationship. So the, I think that we're, we're doing good with this contract right now. Next year, you know, we'll get with them, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, two years we'll get with them and, and revisit it, and, and maybe if there's a change that needs to be made, we'll, we'll do that. Mayor, I'd like to motion for approval. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign the motion carries. Item 13, board appointments. I have none, sir. None. Yeah, I'd like to uh, appoint Lorenzo Hernandez to Harlingen Proud Advisory Board. Eric Zihi to the uh, Economic Development Committee and for Planning and Zoning, Jerry Wayne Lowry. I want to appoint uh, Daniel Martinez to the PNZ and reappoint Ms. Hani Salas um, to the, uh, the community development. Okay. And I'm going to be appointing uh, Trey Peacock to the PNZ. Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve? A motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And if you, anybody, did you get all those, uh, Amanda? Yes, okay. Sir. Very good. All right. Item 14 is an executive uh, closed session for the following items. A, pursuant to Section 551.071, Texas Government Code, to consult with the city attorney in connection with the MPO merger. B, pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.0871, to discuss or deliberate regarding commercial or financial information that the City of Harlington has received from a business prospect that the government body uh, seeks to have locate, stay, or expand in or near the city and with which the city is conducting economic development negotiations regarding current own industries. C, attorney client uh, consultation to 551.0712, to seek legal advice regarding the city's legal duties and obligations surrounding the appointment of a Harlan Municipal Court judge. Uh, is there a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the city commission is going to meet with their attorney in the conference room uh, to discuss some matters in executive session. Uh, we will return for two additional items on the agenda. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we are out of executive session at 6.50. Now we're going to go to item 15, consideration and possible action regarding the appointment of a Harlingen Municipal Court Judge. Mayor and Commission, uh, staff is recommending that uh, we go out for request for qualifications for qualified uh, Municipal Court Judge, and we open it up as soon as possible and bring it back to the commission with a recommendation. Is there... I'll make that motion. Second. I have a motion to accept the staff the city manager's recommendation. Yes. Second. Second. All of, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Out of 16 citizen communication. I have Mario Eric Moreno. All right, Mr. Moreno, if you, if you would uh, state your name and also your address, and uh, then you can uh, please address the, the city commission. Thanks. Mario Moreno, uh, manager 2117 Vista, Better Circle West. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'm here for two reasons. Uh, one is for fees for the park, to rent the park for the softball tournaments. Uh, it's been postponed for four years, and they said it's going to be the agenda today, but it's not. They keep saying that, so I don't know what's going on. I have talked to Dancy and said not in the past, and now yet Mendes. So I don't know what's, what's the update on the park rentals. 
I'm sorry, what, what was the, the question? The, the softball? Softball, yeah. The the pennies? Pennies? Yes. They said uh, everything's about pennies, just for attorneys to get approved. So. Okay, this is just a uh, uh, citizen communication. It's an opportunity for you to address us. We can't really discuss your issue because it's not on the agenda, but we can hear from you and then. Well, the agenda okay. for today is on there, sir. All right. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Uh, my address again, uh, as I said before, um, we need a stop sign for the kids here in the neighborhood. There's no stop sign, so traffic's kind of heavy. And um, the, I talked to the city, and they haven't, they gone. They said, oh, no, they do need a stop sign, but they haven't done anything yet. I'm trying to stop for somebody and get an accident or hit a house. It's real narrow. You know, I have a picture to show you that, you know, that's when people park there for parties. The street's already smaller, and then you make it smallest. So it's kind of hard for the safety of the kids. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you stay at the meeting? <coughs> Can you stay at the meeting? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Any, anyone else? All right. That concludes our citizen communication. It also concludes our meeting. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourned.